Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm glad you are here. I hope you are fine. Today we're going to do a different activity. We're going to read a book, but the book is a little um, long. So I'm going to listen with you the audio of a part of the story, okay? I'm going to add pictures of all the text so you can finish the reading at home because you have um, to copy on your notebooks an activity of comprehension, okay? There are some questions that you need to answer so you need to read this at home, complete, okay? So we're going to listen uh, half of the story. So let's start. A Land of New Hope by Andy Hopkins and Jocelyn Potter. Copyright Pearson Education Limited 2014. Chapter 1 The Open Door. The Statue of Liberty, Patrick shouted. We're here, Ronan, the United States of America. Ronan ran to the side of the ship. It's huge, he said. And look at those mountains behind it. His brother laughed. They're not mountains. They're skyscrapers, the tallest buildings in the world. That's the city of New York. But first, we go there. Patrick pointed to a small island. All new immigrants have to go to Ellis Island. Stay in line, shouted a man in uniform. The brothers were on their way into Ellis Island's Great Hall. They went up the stairs with hundreds of others. Doctors watched from the top. One put a mark on a young woman's back. Hold your head up, Ronan, said Patrick quietly. They're looking for people who are ill. They don't want sick people in this country. What will happen to her? Ronan asked. I don't know. Perhaps they'll send her home. Ellis Island. Between 1892 and 1924, 12 million immigrants arrived at Ellis Island. In one year, 1907, more than a million came. The immigration station grew larger, with more beds, kitchens, and hospitals. Most people only spent a few hours on the island and then entered the country. Some sick people had to spend weeks there. Other people had to stay there before officials sent them home. The United States did not want them. Today, Ellis Island is a museum. The man at the desk looked at the papers in front of him. You're from Ireland? Yes, Patrick answered. And this is my brother. Can you read and write? The official asked Ronan. No, sir, Ronan answered. But I can learn and I can work. The official looked at Patrick. So your uncle paid for your tickets. Did he send you any money? Yes, sir. Patrick carefully pulled $50 from his pocket. The official's face was not friendly. His questions came fast. Will he let us in? Ronan thought. He could see the fear in his brother's eyes. Then the man smiled and gave Patrick two cards. You can go downstairs to the boat. He said. The boys ran down the stairs to start their new lives. It was 1921, 
And now they had a future. Now they had hope. Chapter 2 Leaving Home Six months earlier, Patrick and Ronan were at home in Ireland. Listen, boys, their father said. This is a letter from your Uncle Dermot in New York. Inside are two boat tickets. One for you, Patrick, and one for you, Ronan. Patrick's mouth fell open. But, Father, Colleen... Colleen can wait, said his father. There's nothing for you here. Your future's in America. There's work there. You can send some money home for your family. Ronan was excited. New York? His father was a poor farmer. The land was not his, and he made little money. Surely life was better in America. When did Uncle Dermot leave Ireland? He asked. Twenty years ago, father said. He's doing well. My grandfather went too, you know. He left in the 1840s, but the family stayed here. There was no money for tickets. Was life difficult then? Patrick asked. Terrible. It was the time of the potato famine. The Irish Potato Famine. In 1845, disease ruined the potato crop, the most important food for poor Irish people. In the next six years, there were few potatoes. More than a million people died. Another million left Ireland at that time. Many went to England, but half traveled to North America. Most Irish immigrants to the United States had little money, so they stayed near New York. By 1855, 25% of the people in the city were Irish. It was a beautiful spring morning. Patrick and Colleen sat beside the river. Colleen, I love you so much, he said. And I love you too, Patrick Dooley, she answered. He smiled, a sad smile. I'm going to America with young Ronan to find work. She said nothing, but a tear fell from her eye. Will you wait for me, Colleen? I'll send a ticket for you when I have money. Oh, yes, Patrick. I'll wait. After World War I, Irish men and women were not the only Europeans who had to emigrate in the 1920s. In World War I, 1914 to 1918, People lost family, friends, homes, and land. They were hungry, and they had no work. The map of Europe changed. After the war, more than 15 million people wanted to travel to North America. But there was not enough work for Americans. So from 1921, the United States only took about 350,000 new immigrants each year. Chapter 3. Journey to Another Land This is home for the next six days, Ronan, said Patrick. The boys were on the ship now. There were people everywhere. Ronan looked around him with wide eyes. It's very big. The Baltic carries about 3,000 people, Patrick laughed. 3,000? Where will we all sleep? Don't worry. You'll have a bed. And there are bathrooms and sitting rooms and food too. 
It was very different when father's grandfather traveled to America. In the 1840s, at the time of the Irish potato famine, the journey to New York was terrible. Ships brought cargo to Ireland and returned to North America with passengers. Rooms were dirty with little air or light. People with money brought food with them. The poorest stayed hungry and there was never enough clean water. One in seven passengers died on the long journey. Over the years, more than 50,000 Irish people died on these coffin ships. The ship left Queenstown in the south of Ireland. I'm going to look around, said Ronan later. Okay, Patrick said. Take your bag. There are thieves everywhere. Ronan went outside. He opened a door and went up a lot of stairs to the top part of the ship. Through a window, he could see a huge, beautiful room full of rich people. He put his bag down. Hey, you! A man shouted. Ronan turned and ran back down the stairs. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to add pictures of all of the story because it is long like I said and you need to finish this reading so you can answer the questions I'm giving to you I'm giving you these questions and I'm going to add to the assignation look at the picture on page 3 and answer these questions okay you need to copy the questions and answer on your notebooks please don't forget to send me pictures of your notebook so i can check that you did this activity have a nice day i'll see you the next week bye